Hello there, Graham again, and uh, now I bring you part two in this very exciting series about setting the JJ up. Today I'm going to go through the advanced checklist and make sure the unit is functioning properly and is ready for diving. So we're here with Goldie and my box of tricks. So let's see what precious things are in here. The most important thing of the checklist is the checklist itself. Nice little printed thing that we can stick on the side of our tanks and it shows us that we've done the checklist and it shows our teammates that we've done it, which is pretty cool. Then we've got the rebreather, some reading glasses for old people like me. So the first thing I'm going to do is analyse and this is very precious, the GUE marking tape. Even my analyzer's insulting me. Alpha loser, I think, isn't it? Make sure the isolators are open. Although, if you've done anything with these long connected tanks, you'll know that it's a nightmare trying to get the gas to equalize, and that the Nitec seems to be a bit better than the Lola's in this respect. <laughs> Okay, 17, helium, not that much of a concern, but I know it's 55 today, 14th of January, my initials, I'll put the pressure in later. Pressure is not actually that important, although it does tell you if gas is leaking out or if it's increased if someone's fiddled around with your tanks and then you can reanalyze. We do have a standard in GUE to analyze on the day of diving, so although I'm not diving today, I will verify the analysis before I go diving. Okay. Do the oxygen, so one little cheat for you with the oxygen, you can actually analyse through the solenoid feed hose, which saves unscrewing. The tank, so again, slow flow. Ninety nine point six seems like oxygen to me. <laughs> All right, so let's crack on with the checklist and for this glasses on. All right, first line of the checklist is are the sensors less than one year old? And they were manufactured in January 2021, so they're just okay. And I'll just fill in their date of manufacture. And then I need to check the air millivolts. So in order to do this, and a shout out to Jens for his 3D printed JJ stand. Stops it rolling onto the floor and breaking, which is obviously a good thing. So what we need to do here is let the electronics wake up and then we're going to right button until we get to the millivolts. Have I gone past it? Yes, I think I have. Okay, until we get to the millivolts. So we've got 11.2, 11.1 and 10.8. 
you should expect to see those move around a little bit they shouldn't be completely static so there that one's gone 11.1 .1, now back to 11.2 now we're going to do a calculation to work out what the expected value is in oxygen when we do the calibration um, so there is a little formula on the spreadsheet but actually what we need is 1 divided by 0.21 because that's the ratio of oxygen in air versus oxygen in pure oxygen uh, if you haven't got pure oxygen or you're not at one bar you can adjust that uh, but i know that number um, 4.76 and 10.5 is equal to 50 and every 0.1 above 10.5 will add 0.5 to that so 10.6 millivolts would give us 50.5 and 10.7 would give us 51 and so on so if we go through that for uh, 11.2 that is 0.7 above 10.5 so that's roughly 3.5 above 50 and 11.1 .1 is 0.6 so roughly 3 above 50 so 53 and 10.8 that's 1.5 uh, above 50 so 51.5 and you may or may not be able to hear the solenoid clicking there which is a good thing so the next line of the checklist is the calibrated millivolts obviously I can't give the calibrated millivolts because I haven't done calibration yet so we'll come back to that during calibration next step is the external battery voltage and the internal battery voltage so information right button on the controller and as per usual I've scrolled past it so we've got 8.4 and 3.43 so I'll write those in uh, just one thing to bear in mind with the external voltage so we've got 8.4 here it says here it must be greater than 6.6 .6 or 5.5. 5.5 is the analog reading. Uh, in reality for long dives and especially in cold water I don't find that number particularly useful and I've just normally got in my head that the battery voltage should be similar to the intermediate pressure of the oxygen tank so somewhere above 7.5 volts. Um, lots of discussion about discharge curves of lithium batteries there but more or less that's going to protect you. All right, the next thing to check is the HUD battery. So I'm gonna turn the HUD on and watch it go through its sequence. And if we've got a low battery, we should have 30 seconds of gray. I am colorblind, um, gray flashes and we didn't there. So I'm just gonna initial that to confirm. And then the controller setup, I know that that's set correctly, but this is a good opportunity for me to go through the setup if I wanted to and check everything's right there. Um, interestingly, it's not set up correctly, is it? Because the actual oxygen of the diluent is not 10 so what i should do and that means my last dive was probably with 1070 i should go through this and change that so go on to select gas and obviously i don't have anything suitable so what i need to do is define gas next so let's edit this one we'll turn it on Next, it is 17%. Yep, so let's go to there. So that one's okay. And I'm happy with 40%, that's close enough. Um, obviously, it does have an impact on your decompression, so you can make a decision whether you lie to your controller or not. So that's all good. Select gas, there we go. This is par for the course. Select gas, next, select. Okay, 1740. So the reason we want that set at the actual PO2 of our diluent is if we want to do a dill flush later on on the dive, we can check what the PO2 is at our depth and we don't have to do any mental maths, which is obviously a good thing. 
All right, the next line of our checklist is the ace. Um, everything in diving is ace, just like everything is awesome. Um, so ace is the absorbent canister endurance, and I've got a brand new canister, so I'm just gonna write 200 minutes in there. I did pack that off camera, I promise you. Next line, a lid visual check. So I'm now just going to check the O-rings, make sure they're clean and don't have any dirt on them. I'm going to check the Jesus O-ring as it's known in the inspiration because if you forget it you better hope Jesus is with you. Um, that's in place, that's in place, that's all good. The solenoid looks in good condition and I can't see any damage or anything to be concerned about otherwise on the head. So we can sign that off as done. All right, so at this point, we can actually assemble this into the rebreather because the next line of the checklist is the loop check valve. So when we're installing this, we kind of cradle the scrubber like a baby and then we go backwards. And I actually know that that screw there is going to line up pretty well with the push button. So we go backwards until we hear a click and then we should be able to just tighten that on without cross-threading. Obviously do it on camera and it's not gonna behave. Oh, there we go. All right, nice and tight. And then we can pop that straight into the canister. Have a look, not too carefully in mine, in the bottom of your canister, make sure it's clean, tidy, and there's no dirt in there. And then we're just gonna push the button in. We're gonna let that go down. And then we will just wanna push that down until we hear the solid click that means that's engaged. That's quite important to make sure this doesn't jump out when you're diving, which would be a definite loss of fabulousness. Snessness. All right, connect the song line up. That's O-ring sealed, so we don't need a wrench in there to Tighten that into place, then we can come round the front and just wiggle the handle up so we can fit the hoses through. There we go. All right, so I like to come through with the controller first. And I'm just going to pull that through and leave it in the middle there for now. And then I'm going to push the inhale hose through and then push the exhale hose through. And one nice little thing for you to do is stuff the HUD cable up the inside of that hose protector. It just keeps it all together and no damage potential there. So pull those hoses through. All right, I'm gonna connect this regulator up as well. All right, and then just one thing that I like to do, I just like the HUD to be on the inside so it can't catch on anything. And then on the exhale counter lung, that's a reverse thread. So we're actually tightening it. If it was a correct, not a correct thread, a normal thread. So that's tightened in. If those get really tight, you can just dab a little bit of silicone grease around the inside of your T-piece and that will help lubricate the O-ring and then they'll slide in nice and easy. So we'll connect that to that. So, all right. And then the HUD we'll deal with when we put the loop on. And as per usual, that's got how I don't like it. All right, so I want that coming out the middle of those hoses. And then I'm just going to pop it under or through the shoulder strap. And then I'm going to bring it around on top of the unit again so it's in place for when I do my calibration. I'm just going to hang it over here for now. And I'm going to turn that off as well. All right, so let's go back to the checklist. And we'll see the next 
line loop return valve check okay so we're on the bob we can do the we can do the check there where we alternate the end of the hose onto a cheek and then we feel if it sucks and blows accordingly and if there's any um, flow of gas in the direction there shouldn't be this one's got these nice little directional arrows that you can see there and the DSV has also got a directional arrow if you're not sure which way the gas is supposed to flow so it flows from your left to your right the right hand side being the exhale okay so we've checked that we're going to bring that back to the front and connect it up there we go and like I said yesterday I just going to adjust that so it kind of hangs in that orientation and then connect this up. All right, and then pop that through there. And screw this bad boy in. And this one's one that's really good at coming unscrewed, so I'm actually going to get my wrench in a minute and go a little bit more than finger tight on that one. Let's get a wrench on that. Hmm, I wonder who this belongs to. <laughs> Alright, so that's all good. Last thing would be the HUD. So we want to pop that into these retaining O-rings if you've got them. Keeps it neat and tidy and out of the way. Um, I hate the fact that this has got a contact switch on it because it keeps turning on and driving you absolutely nuts. I also hate the fact that this HUD holder on this BOV is there in the middle. It really needs to be a bit further across. And I know you can buy a little uh extender but really you shouldn't have to buy stuff like extenders to make the thing work how it's supposed to it really should work like that out of the box in my opinion okay so let's go back to our checklist and see what's next i've made a conscious effort not to memorize these so that i do them in order I've done the check valve and the next thing to do is a negative pressure and an O2 SPG um, at the same time. So it's quite specific about doing that at the same time. And in order to check the SPG, we need to have pressure in there. So I want to turn on my oxygen and I do have pressure. I have a hundred bar in there. Okay. And then I'm going to pull a negative vacuum. The way I'm going to pull a negative vacuum is breathe in through the loop, out through my nose until I fill the vacuum. And I know there'll be a vacuum because the ADV will be pulled in and you'll see the hoses um, tighten up as well. Let's have a look at that. <laughs> All right, so we can now see that those hoses are tightened up. If we pinch them, we can see we keep that pinch in the hose and we can see that the EDV diaphragm is depressed and the pressure is still 100 bar. So I'm gonna go off now, have a tiny coffee and I'll be back in a second. Aha, uh -huh. good. My ADV diaphragm is still depressed. My hose is still pinched in. That's good. And ah, good. I've still got the same amount of oxygen in the system. So that's good. So if I'd failed negative pressure, I'd know there was a leak somewhere in the loop, which I need to investigate. If I'd failed negative pressure and my oxygen pressure gauge had decreased, I could 
make the leap that the failing pressure was because oxygen was going into the system, either via the solenoid or via the MAV. Of course, you could have a leak somewhere else in the system and a leak somewhere on the open circuit oxygen as well. But certainly it would give us a clue whether the solenoid or the MAV had a problem before the dive. So that's why we do those things together. All right, so the next line of the checklist, what is that? We can initial to confirm that's okay. Positive pressure and diluent SPG check. Diluent, we can do nice and easily, 170, that's cool, which means I used five bar on my last dive, which happened to be a nice dive. And write that in. Okay, so we can check the leak on this side. Uh, the left post, but the left post actually has nothing to do with the rebreather. So one little thing that I like to do is to check the integrity of the right side is I actually fill up the unit with the ADV and then I turn off the right post and I'm just going to take a little bit of pressure out of the counter lungs. So I'll remember the turgidity of the counter lungs. So if they've increased, I potentially know that the right post via the ADV is leaking into the system. And if they decreased, I realize that I've got a leak somehow that didn't show up on the negative. Uh, pressure check. Of course, depending what kind of leak it is, sometimes a negative can pull a leak um, tight and it will no longer leak and then you, it will show up on the positive when it pushes out and therefore our counter lungs will decrease in size. All right, so I'm going to go off for another tiny coffee. Good. Counter lungs are still in the same orientation. There's still pressure on the right post. That's good. I know there's not a leak on my right post, which is great. And if I check my diluent pressure, that has also not moved. So I'm pretty sure the loop is tight and the left and the right post or the right and the left post are actually functioning as we would expect. That's good. So let's go back to our checklist and see what the next stage is. The next stage is calibration. Okay, and I want to follow this in sequence. So it says open the O2 supply, which I will do. All the way on or all the way off. So that's all the way on. I will sign that. Open the DSV or the BOV. Now, why would we want to do that? We actually want to do that because oxygen is just gonna fire into the mixing chamber in the top of the head here, and it's not gonna flush the whole loop. If we leave the BOV or the DSV closed, we'll actually increase the pressure, and then we'll get a faulty calibration, which is not what we want at all. Turn the HUD on. Of course, the HUD is already on because that bad boy never seems to turn off. Turn the controller on. All right, so turn the controller on and don't be in a rush at this point to go to calibrate the controller. Let the unit wake up and let the set point come up to 0.7. Before we do calibration, the system's really designed to calibrate from 0.7, not designed to calibrate from air. So if you try and calibrate from air, it may actually um, not flush enough to get a good reading in your oxygen um, calibration, and therefore you might fail calibration. All right, so we've come up to 0.8. That's expected because, again, 
it's only adding gas to the mixing chamber not the whole loop so the solenoid is kind of calibrated for the whole loop and if you're not pumping gas around the system meaning you're not breathing from it it'll only be adding a little bit of gas there to the mixing chamber so an overshoot here is exactly what we're expecting so now we can go to our next stage which is our calibration so left twice and then we press calibrate and we'll see that and here the gas has been added to the mixing chamber and that's going to flush pure oxygen through the sensors enabling us to get a calibration and as we come up to this last bit of calibration we see that the millivolts are approaching what we're expecting from the top of the sheet we'll have a look at that in a minute and when it finishes don't be in a rush to go to the next line come round and calibrate your HUD because what's happening is one, two presses and then a long press to fill up those four LEDs and then that will calibrate. But why we want to do that in a rush is because what's happening is because this is opening, the gas that's been added to the, the mixing chamber is now going to start mixing with the ambient so the PO2 will decline. So we want to calibrate the HUD as quickly as possible and that's now reading 1.0. We then come back to our um, calibration report which will stay on the screen for a while. 51, 50 and 50. So we've got 51, 50 and 50. So what would cause that to fail is a difference of two millivolts, more or less. So it's quite difficult to get pure oxygen in that head and you might have environmental considerations or altitude considerations that don't allow you to reach that 100%. So plus or minus 5%, which normally for 50 millivolts is 2.5 millivolts. So I'm happy with that. So I will calibrate the controller. We did the HUD and then we go on to the last section of the uh, checklist, which gives us our supply section. So here we want to check the interstage pressure of the oxygen and the diluent and write in our pressures. So we know we've got 170 bar of diluent. We know we've got 100 bar of oxygen. We can write those in and we'll go over and we'll check the intermediate pressures there. All right, so we can check the intermediate pressure of the oxygen here at the MAV. And there we go, that's reading seven, which is about right, somewhere between seven and seven and a half. And in reality, you want to be tending towards the seven end of that range for full tanks. And you want to be uh, tending towards the 7.5 with nearly empty tanks. Why would you dive with nearly empty tanks? Obviously that doesn't make any sense. So we're really looking for something in that range, 7 to 7.5. But as I said, tending towards the lower pressure with fuller tanks and the higher pressure with emptier tanks with that oxygen. Then we're going to check the diluent and that should just be a normal intermediate pressure somewhere between 9 and 10 bar and that's about 9.5. Don't forget to connect the wing back up. And we had seven and 9.5. I can now write here my signature and the date today, which is the 14th of January. And then I can stick this on the side of my tanks so that everybody knows I've done my checks and everybody knows that the unit is ready for diving. Yes, nice and straight. All right, just some things to be mindful of. Make sure that all your regulators and all your hoses are connected because that can cause you to fail your leak tests in unexpected ways. Interestingly enough, if we look at the end of this, there's a Schrader valve in there and that is designed to take pressure from behind on the hose. If you pull a negative, it will suck. And sometimes you can get gas coming in to the, um, the loop 
via that connector if this is not connected to the inflator. So that's quite important to do when we're doing our negatives. Okay, other things that can happen, we leave the controller on when we're trying to do the negative pressure checks. Obviously then it will try and fire oxygen in, which can cause us to fail both the negative pressure because the loop will inflate as you fire oxygen in, and it will also cause you to fail the oxygen SPG check. So we want to make sure the controller is turned off when we do that. And then the last little thing that I can think, there are lots of little tips and tricks which you'll probably hear about if you do the course with a good instructor. The last little thing that I wanted to talk about here was this external voltage. So we talked about the fact that the 6.6 .6 in the manual or on our checklist is probably not enough for diving long dives in cold water, but then sometimes you'll see a question mark here. And what that question mark actually means is that the controller hasn't been able to read the voltage because it reads the voltage when the solenoid opens. So if you turn on the unit and the solenoid hasn't fired yet and you quickly try and check the battery voltage, you'll get a question mark. Uh, if for some reason, and please don't do this, you've set it in 0.19, then obviously the solenoid won't fire in air and then you'll get that question mark. Why do I say don't set at 0.19? Because it's far too close for hypoxia. If you get in the unit and you don't do your pre-dive checks, you can go hypoxic, which is a very not cool thing to do. So uh, please leave it in dive mode if you're going diving. If you've got the head out and you're working on it at the surface, then for sure put it in 0.19, but otherwise leave it in dive mode. All right, so unit's ready for diving. Yes, let's go diving.